Alrighty guys, hi, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day today. As always, if you're new or returning and you haven't yet already, please be sure you subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. And as always, leave any comments, questions, or concerns down in the comment section. I will try my best to see you there. So today's video is gonna be totally, totally, totally different than any other content I have done before. I am very nervous. I'm doing um, a lot of extra stuff on the back end that you guys don't see that I hope works out so this can be smooth. Anyways, this video is in collaboration with Radiant Brit. I'm sure you can tell that by the title. I will be sure to include her video and her previous video which started this as well as her channel all linked down below. If you don't know who she is or you haven't checked her out, I would highly encourage you do so. She is one of the real ones on here, both on and off camera. She has been an amazing friend to me, more than just an ally here on YouTube. So I'm going to be getting into just a quick brief backstory into what sparked all of this and then we'll get into the video. So I'm going to warn you this will be a long one and it's this is going to be a trial and error process unfortunately. So with that being said I'm sure you guys are aware but if not the video Britt did like last week or so was a reaction video from a video that or a live stream rather that without a crystal ball Katie Joy did on her channel reacting to and providing if you want to call it criticism to Jill on how she applied her makeup. Now in Radiant Brit Brit's video she pointed out a lot of things that Katie was saying weren't necessarily criticisms it was really Katie just being a mean girl and I really resonated with Brit. Uh, I felt the same way. A lot of the comments that Katie was saying were really rude and really didn't have any standing other than her own opinion. And she really was just kind of being a nasty person. I'm sure anybody clicking on this video really isn't surprised by that behavior, but it got me thinking because Britt and I have been wanting to do a collab and we've had a hard time really coming up with a solid collab idea. We both do different kinds of makeup related content, but that's just it. It's pretty different. So we really hadn't been able to come up with anything. But when I watched her video, I was like, you know, what would be a good way to not only provide Katie criticism, but could be show not only maybe her follow but people and people who aren't followers of hers just how different makeup is I don't want to be a mean girl so I said how about we do like a reaction slash recreation I'm not sure what Brit is going to do for her video yet and it is going to be me who is recreating how she does her makeup on half of my half of my face and then I am going to recreate or try to use the same products and how I would do my makeup on the other half of my face. This isn't to be mean, this is really just to show Katie that every and any woman in general, if you don't do your makeup the way other people do, whether that's a beauty guru, whether that's an influencer, whether it's a pro makeup artist, it may turn out perfectly fine for your face and what works for you does not work for everybody. And that's really the message in me doing the recreation part. So this is going to be like a reaction video to this video, which is a year old, as well as me recreating. So the video itself is a live stream. It's about an hour and 10 minutes. I'm hoping that we can fast forward through parts. We're going to just get started. So with that being said, I am going to start off. Uh, I do apologize for this being all over the place. Um, I typically, for those of you who don't know, kind of film the same way every time. I've never done a reaction video, so I've had to learn how to operate this stuff. And if it's a mess or the audio is crappy, I want to say I am so sorry. I have tried my best to get it to the best place that I can, and I hope it is decent. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start. I am watching this in an incognito tab that is not to be shady. Let's get on into this. And her, if you're interested, I will link this video, obviously from Katie below. We'll talk about it a little bit before we get into it. I am going to hide her chat and that's just out of respect for people who were in the chat, we are going to and start the video. So you guys can see here, it was streamed 
last year, 9,000 views on it. And she had 176 thumbs up versus 66 thumbs down. Pretty general description here, but let's go ahead and get into it. It is a slow start. So um, she does talk though. So I am going to try and let her speak. I start to ask me what I wear for makeup and what I'm doing. I figured I would just do a get ready with you guys and you guys can see what I use and then um, all the stuff I do. And I just thought it would be a fun chit chat. And I apologize if the lighting isn't the best. Um, I have to have a specific lighting on up here so that I can see because I'm old. So I hope you guys are having a good Saturday morning, first and foremost. Thank you guys so much for all of your support this week and these past few weeks. Honestly, it's been absolutely crazy. So um, a lot of you guys ask what I use for my makeup um, or for my foundation. Oops, hold on. Um, and I use what's called Makeup Forever HD. And then I am shade R260. And it is my perfect match. And I love it. It is not, I don't even know. I get it at Sephora. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Okay, so I am gonna pause her really quick. So, couple of things here. You've seen me putting on products. I have watched this part. I've watched about half of it, like I stated before. She doesn't use moisturizer or primer, so this is the side of the face that I'm doing my way. This is the side that she does it. I'm gonna let you guys know what I'm using, just so you're aware and we're kind of keeping a steady pace here. Um, I am using a, a sample size of the drug drunk elephant this one is the polypeptide it's their moisturizer if you buy the big one it has a pump on top it is a very good moisturizer but it is super pricey for my primer today i am using the tatcha silk canvas so she uses makeup forever i don't have that foundation anymore i did once upon a time but that foundation was too drying on my skin uh, and i haven't purchased it since it was when it was new so instead what i'm going to be using is the catrice HD liquid coverage foundation. She does use a brush. I will also be using a brush that is from Sephora, but it's just a complexion brush. It's not an airbrush. It's, I'm going to apply it the way she does on her side and apply it the way I would on my side. And if I have to pause it, I will. And then to apply it, I just use my Sephora Pro um, Flawless Airbrush. I'm kind of a Sephora um obsession. I love Sephora. I apply the foundation to my back of the back of my hand and then I just dip it in. Some people will put their foundation on after um, they do their eyes. I prefer to do it before. Otherwise, I feel like I can't get a um, good. It's hard for me to make it so it doesn't look weird when I apply it. So I am gonna pause it right there because if you have watched any of my makeup videos or my makeup tutorials or whatever you wanna call them that I have done, it's 50-50 for me. If I do my eyes before my base or my base before my eyes, typically I prefer to do my eyeshadow before my base just because I am not the most precise when I do my eyeshadow and if I have fallout or make a mess, I find it is easier to fix it, then put foundation on rather than uh, using a different method, which I believe she mentions. Uh, there is a couple of things that happen at the front half of this video, even though we're only two minutes in that I think kind of are telling. This is a year ago and she is already kind of having issues with something. I didn't do that much research to figure out what issue she is referring to here, but she says, Thank you for your support over the last few weeks a year ago she was already struggling which i know she says 18 months a lot but one of the things she did do is whenever she said she likes shopping at sephora at the beginning she got kind of rude in my opinion i of course i don't have the the replay on for the chat but it appeared that she was kind of maybe responding to somebody because she went mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like kind of some I don't want to call it snarky because she takes that as a compliment. Uh, it was just kind of mean girl. If we're going to, for my side, this is my side. I am just going to pat it in and drag it around. And I'm not, you'll see the difference of things that I'm doing as we watch. And then it's hard for me to apply it without ruining my eye makeup. Good evening, Karina. Thank you for becoming a member. So 
something super cool is that my channel is offering memberships now. And I've been noticing that I've never tried a Chanel foundation, Samantha. Hi, Emily. Good morning. I realize this will probably be a small chat, but that's okay. You love them? I haven't tried them. I really like Makeup Forever. It's hard because, you know, once you find your match, it's hard to like change products. And this one matches my skin forever. Good morning, Lauren. Um, so I just noticed that I have a members only chat now. And so I'm thinking that with my tiers, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offer a members only chat on some of the streams. Um, a, a lot, I'm going to offer it to anyone that does the $3.99 and up. That way um, I can, you guys can interact and not have to deal with some of the craziness that we get on the channel sometimes. A lot of the streams will remain open to the public, but I will be offering some just chats only available for members. Obviously today we know that she did obviously enact her memberships, which I don't have a problem with people, creators utilizing the ability to make money through memberships. As my issue comes when you are saying that you're going to provide them all these services for this amount of money and you don't follow through. Now, of course, without me actually paying said membership, I don't know if these creators are following through or not. I did subscribe to a couple in the past and I can tell you I'm not going to say which creators they were but they were not following through with what I was being what I was paying them monthly for um hence why I have canceled memberships if you're not going to be providing me with what I am paying for to support you I am not going to pay that amount I will either drop down show support in how much I am paying for a membership or I will cancel the membership altogether I like to support the creators I believe in and I, I see that they're doing the right thing or at least in my opinion they're doing the right thing and I enjoy their content I'm going to try and support in any way I can but there have been times when I have felt I needed to retract that unfortunately and I hope this isn't something where people are getting lost in and are forgetting that they are doing memberships for channels and then aren't following through to make sure that they are being met. Talks about the members only live stream here. We know current day she is only holding members only live streams. She has that ability. We all have our own opinions. It's really interesting to me to watch how she is trying to address her memberships here and trying to obviously convince people to join which is what you're supposed to do as a creator when you enact your memberships i'm not really going to fault her there I, the faults i have is what i've already stated it comes to this specific creator she has two channels both of which have membership uh which is whatever she can do it right but we know for a fact people are not getting what they are paying for on that second channel because she's not uploaded anything there so people aren't getting the ability to be a part of those members only chats that she is offering on those channels and things like that so and i know she's addressed it briefly not in a good way in my opinion um she pretty much told her subscribers to cancel their membership for that channel until she came back if they didn't want to continue paying for it it was not very nice i don't have the clip for it this was like a month ago Cobra, your heat's not working. I'm sorry. Okay. And then, I keep forgetting I have to tell you what I'm doing. For my foundation, or for my um, concealer, which I use for my under eyes, like I get bags. I'm so tired still. And then I use it on my nose, around my T-zone. Um, I'm not a huge highlighter. I don't really think the highlighting look is all that great um, on me. But some people like it. This is more just for um, brightening up my eyes. Um, and I use the NARS um, Radiant Creamy Concealer. And by the way, I don't have any relationships with any of these companies. This is because you guys have asked so many questions. Light to vanilla. And I use a, a lighter concealer to help brighten up my eyes. I think there's some comparables. Um, I can't remember. There's, you can actually Google dupes for this. This is actually one of the top rated concealers if you go like onto Allure, which rates concealers. And then I use the same brush. <laughs> Doesn't this look great? 
Okay, so just to provide some clarification here, I do have the same concealer she's using in a, a sample. I know I'm looking off to the side. It is primarily because that's where my mirror is and doing half of a face is um, more challenging than I ever thought watching any kind of beauty guru. Um, I don't wear concealer typically on my side, on the this side of my face, I'm not going to put any because I don't typically wear concealer. I will also blend it out with a brush she's using. I do just want to notate here. Um, this is technically highlighting. So she said she doesn't highlight, but when you are using a lighter shade, then your skin tone, professional makeup artists say that this is highlighting your face because you're trying to bring that part of your face forward um, versus contouring, which is where you try to put the shadows on your face. I just wanted to provide some information here that I know from watching so many beauty gurus. So I'm going to blend this out. And we're going to continue. And I also put the concealer on um, part of the um, lid because the concealer on the lid actually becomes a really solid base there. And I'm not a makeup influencer, so don't expect me to like, I'm not a makeup artist either. I'm just someone that likes makeup. So I'm really not, at this point, I'm probably going to start nitpicking and I'm sorry, but she's, I looked through to see which video I wanted to react to because there are other videos of her doing her makeup, but she, she starts this, you guys wanted me to show you my makeup. So I'm going to show you my makeup. And then we're six minutes in and we've been through three ads now. Um, she has said, I'm not an influencer. I don't know. I just like makeup. Well, in one of her previous videos, I think it's her first one that she does. If, if not, it's the second one. Um, she <laughs> says how she has recently started purchasing makeup from Sephora. And in this, which is fine. Whenever you get introduced to Sephora and Ulta and all of that is fine. There's nothing wrong with drugstore products. I use a ton of drugstore products and high-end products. There's nothing wrong with that. It's She is trying to portray, in my opinion, what I'm gathering from watching all of these is she is trying to portray that she purchases all this fancy, expensive makeup which has continued to today I use a similar one from Mac is there a link for members um let me you know I was having this problem because I don't know this chat is just for getting ready Susan I'm just doing a Susan like because they always get questions about what I use for makeup so it's just to talk about the makeup I use and what products you like and that kind of stuff. Let me see if I can find you guys a link. You got the Shane Dawson Jeffrey palettes. What was wrong with them, Susan? Interesting. I am fast forwarding just a little bit because I know there's times in here because I've watched most of this, um, where we'll address the behaviors as they come up. This one, she is, to me, reflecting that she wants to be sure people have access to her members uh, link, which whatever. Again, I'm not going to readdress that again. But she's taking time out of her live chat to make sure that this is done. I would think, and I understand this is new for her, but I would assume she would have had that readily available. I don't want to get ahead of myself because I know what's coming up in, in the chat. But I found it interesting that somebody mentioned something about getting the Shane and Jeffrey collab because it had come out around this time last year. And I we're not watching the chat, so I'm assuming here, but why did she automatically jump to the conclusion that something was wrong with it? Why was that the way she asked? Because she obviously wanted clarifying information, right? Why was it, what was wrong with it? Why was her question not, well, do you like it? To me, this shows like she is a negative person. There is no possibility of it being a good palette or having a good experience with it. No, um, Natalie, the people that are green um, are members of the channel. So they've, uh, they're um, channel members. And here we can see, which I have criticized her on multiple times. She is enthralled with her chat. Uh, I mean, I understand addressing the people in your chat and reading your chat. It helps build a sense of community. I try my best to, you know, make sure that I am having a level balance. If I've, I have found myself at times, no, 
paying too much attention to what everybody's saying and not moving forward in a conversation or the conversation ending up in a circle because I address something without watching the comments. And then I end up delayed in the comments. So by the time I get to the comments, it resurfaces the conversation and anybody who has joined since then provides their input and it's like a circle. But for somebody who already has the following that she has at this point, I find it interesting that she is this concerned about what her chat is saying. Carly became a member. What's Carly's username? Do you know, Lauren? It may seem easy. I hope you guys caught that. It. She said she's a member here, but she's not showing up. We're going to continue. I know this is super boring, but you'll see why I'm going to leave this part in. What's her... Lauren, let me know what the username is, and then I'll check my community to see if there's a reason why she wouldn't be showing up. I don't have this. These aren't age restricted, so she should be able to comment. First issue that I had when I was watching this, and again, parts of me are nitpicking at some of this stuff. This is somebody who would be age restricted if it was an age restricted video. So under the age of 18, I believe it's 18, they have paid for a membership. Interesting. Theocrats and Environment 15. Okay, hold on, let me look. So for those of you who maybe don't have a YouTube channel or don't know how this works, whenever you block somebody or you hide somebody from your channel, you have to go into a community tab separate that only the creators have access to for your channel. And you go through the list of if you have people blocked, there's all of their screen names pop up. So I only say this because I know a lot of people have questions about how many people Katie has blocked. We can only assume but once she gets into this list, you, if you watch closely, you can see her eyes skimming through and we're going to see how long it takes for her to locate this person. And I'm kind of giving it out ahead of time. She does locate this underage person who got blocked, who is a paying member a year ago. You can guarantee this behavior has continued. I know people come into not only my chats, but other creators who I watch their chats and saying, I was a paying member, I was treated poorly, things like that. This was happening a year ago. So her behaviors haven't changed. This speaks to patterns of behavior. Which I don't know if she might have gotten. So you see her today. reading. I know I'm talking over her, but you. Let me just double check. You can see her eyes going across because she's reading all the usernames. Theocrats and Environment 15. TikTok, TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to be. Why she would be hidden. <laughs> Interesting. She makes that comment. Let's see. Did you guys miss the um, banks that were on here last night? That was ridiculous. I'm assuming those are people she has blocked and she came across them and trying to find this other individual and that's why it was brought up. That's me assuming though. I wonder if there's a setting that um, if you're under a certain age, you can't comment. She should know that if she's a creator, just Does saying. Does anyone know if there's a setting there that says it? Save the oceans. Okay. I would just like to add, we haven't set our foundation or anything still at this point. Oh. Ding, ding, ding. She should be fine. I just, she must have gotten mo moved last night or something. She must have gotten moved last night or something. Why can she not just say it for what it is? Why is she trying to make it out to be something it's not? Why is she not just being honest? Like if you're going to accidentally block somebody, just let your audience know it was an accident. That I mean, at this point, maybe she's assuming her audience, excuse me, doesn't know that blocking and hiding people are a thing and she's hoping to plead on their ignorance. 
but she's back on. Okay, I got it, Lauren. I'm wondering if Lauren is the mother of this other person who she just unblocked. If that you add your group via your cell phone service that it actually won't go through until your next cell phone bill is paid. Hmm. I don't know how the payments work. And it's weird because when I'm on, I don't see anything on my channel. Like when I go to my channel. Super enthralled with the fact of her not seeing the join button and what other people are saying about the join button. Because when I'm on, let me look right here. No. No, I don't see it on the, I have an iPhone, so I have absolutely no idea how you add it. Hold on, I have to get Jesse on here. Okay, so she talks about Jesse. She picks up her phone. I am going to fast forward through this bit. Um, if you're interested, you can come back and walk, click the link below. I am going to link her. She, so she, for like a minute and 30 seconds, she is literally like texting, trying to get Jesse on the live stream. I don't know why it's so important that Jesse has to be present, but that is what's occurring in this time frame. So I'm just going to skip that part. Sorry. I'm getting too distracted here. Okay. Now I'm going to do my NARS. No team mom today. Um, I was going to do the Angelina stuff with her wedding. Okay, so she uses NARS. I do not have NARS. I have Laura Mercier, and I made sure to grab it in the translucent shade. I'm only going to use this on this side of my face. I typically will use a pressed powder so that I will be setting my different sides with different things. And I will try to use as much powder as she does. And I really don't want this all over me. She's going in for more, which is fine. Whatever floats your boat, but this goes to show different people like to do their makeup differently. Different people use different amounts of products because I do use, personally, I will sometimes use loose powder. I have in some of my recent videos because my pressed powders are like done right now. <laughs> she dips in a lot for her full face. I've dipped in twice and I have tapped my brush off to the side because I don't want to end up covered in powder. That is just me. Um, as we can see here, if you pay attention, she has powder all over her shoulder because she doesn't tap off her brush. If that's how she prefers to do her makeup, fine. I'm not judging that, but I am not going to end up covered in makeup and loose powder all over my face. So I'm just going to make sure that this is all set. And then I'm going to set the other side of my face now with a pressed powder. I'm going to see if I can get um, her on. Okay. Still worried so about Jesse. I just used my not. Oh. Um. I don't know if you guys can see it, um, but you can see on her how when she's looking down and the light shining on her, you can see right here all of the powder sitting on her face. So we have another minute of her just worried about her phone. All right. Um, what? Hi, Carly. You're back. Okay. So I'm sorry. I've got way too many things going on at the same time. So I have my foundation, my highlighter, all of that on. 
Didn't she say at the beginning she doesn't do highlighter? This is what I'm talking about. Like she can't keep her own stuff straight. And if you didn't realize Carly was the young lady who what I'm assuming lady was hidden from her channel and she unblocks her and kind of have, have if I accidentally hide one of my subscribers who was paying me, they would get more, oh, hi, hi, you're back. I would be like, I am so sorry. Like this has all happened on a live stream where other people are present. I would make sure to extend my apologies and my gratitude for them not being mad at me for having a poor, ex like that could not be a good feeling for that. As an adult, I wouldn't appreciate it. I can't imagine how somebody who is under the age of 18 maybe would take something like that. Now I'm gonna do this, which is my... Um, bronzer and I just use the Sephora Fiji it's the number four medium I don't have any bronzers that dark like I'm assuming Katie and I are probably somewhere along this a similar skin tone because the light concealer from NARS is a good shade for me um, as far as concealing I mean you can tell it's it's a good skin matching color for me um, the darkest bronzer that I have is this um, Marc Jacobs bronzer this is the uh tantastic it's the only one he has of this and i'm only going to be doing this on this side of my face because it's the darker shade that i have on my side the side that i do my makeup my way i'm going to be using the fenty bronzer and in the sun i'm going to put on this side where she puts her bronzer on this side i'm going to put it where i put my bronzer and i do it underneath my cheekbone and then along my nose. So like getting sun kissed and then up on my nose. Are you doing your makeup too, Miz? Isn't it fun to do makeup together? It is fun. I do not know what is up with that baby voice. She does it a few times. She's also not tapping off her brush. That's just a habit of me, of mine to do. So I don't get bunch, uh, bunches of product. For my side, I am going to be taking a smaller brush so I can be more precise with it. Is that what I wrote on there? I am getting my hair done tomorrow. I am getting my hair done tomorrow and I'm just doing the same thing. And then guys, I really, I can't with this phone stuff. I did not realize it was that bad. I mean, obviously in watching this video, I became aware <laughs> that this was a thing that she used to do. I wasn't watching her a year ago. I didn't know this is how she used to do her live streams. And I don't know if I'm being covered up or not. I, did, I don't know, I might've skipped over it or she may be saying it here in just a minute. She doesn't apply blush. She doesn't use blush. So I am quickly going to apply a little bit of blush um, on my side because I do wear blush. Not always, but most of the time I do. that <laughs> you love my accent um, yep i sent you guys a message to the members this morning all right so that's done all right so now i'm going to do my eyebrows which I'm not gonna lie, 
will take a massive amount of concentration. <laughs> does everyone else have one of those eyebrows where they just, it doesn't fill in the same way the other one does? Does anyone have that eyebrow? Where no matter what you do to grow it out, like there's just parts missing. That's what I'm dealing with right now. That's what's so I'm I'm gonna do mine as she does hers because I've watched this part. I'm not gonna be an a-hole. She uses she eventually tells you what she's using. She's using the Anastasia Beverly Hills um brow whiz. I only have the brow definer and their pot or pomade. Um I'm not gonna use either. I am actually going to use the NYX eyebrow pencil because this is uh the duper, the Anastasia. I've had that one before. This does the exact same thing it's the same color so what i'm getting at is i will heavily fill in this eyebrow i'm not going to try and mimic her eyebrow shape or anything like that and then i'm going to do my side the way that when i do do my eyebrows how i do them here um what is my favorite subject to talk about i love to talk about bad moms The membership fee is um, just, it's every month, $3.99 a month. I love to talk about bad moms, to be honest. And you know what? I'm really enjoying the Kate Gosling book um, and the topics related to the Goslings because like. Um... So Katie's favorite thing to do is talk about bad moms. Which, okay, if that's what you enjoy your content to be about, if that's where you find yourself being drawn to, nobody's to judge you. You're a content creator. You can create whatever you want. Just be prepared to deal with backlash because not everybody's going to agree with what you have to say. And who you think is a bad mom doesn't necessarily mean somebody else is going to going to think that they're a bad mom. Um, another thing, I'm going to let her keep talking through this, but another thing is, I don't know if she's pronouncing their name correctly. I thought it was Goslin's. I don't know. Katie has notoriously said people's names wrong before. So I'm not trying to say that she is pronouncing their name incorrectly, but from how I've always referred to them and what I've heard other people call them when referring to that show, the Goslin's, not the Gosling's the effects of fame on children really is an interesting topic to me so i just start by kind of like coloring in because i have so many gaps and i'm using the brow whiz by anastasia <laughs> And then I have to fill in some spots where I can't grow hair for some reason. Do you guys have those spots where no hair grows? It's so bizarre. Like there's, I've been reading a lot about fame with childhood and it actually is considered traumatic. Um, and so like the reality star stuff is fascinating to me of the impacts on the children. And now with you know john speaking out about kate and then correlating that to the book by robert hoffman it's all um, very telling okay. so i know she's out of frame you can kind of see her she's just using a q-tip to clean up her eyebrows i'm back telling your brows don't start growing Yeah, the stuff about Kate has been interesting for sure. Obviously, it's all alleged. So um, at least she knew at this point to use the word alleged. Because she hasn't said anything. It's all allegations. And um, Robert Hoffman's book is obviously not, <clears throat> you know, done from interviews with her. It's done from interviews with people around her. And um, obviously, like he says, journals that she threw away. 
and she's never said anything about what's in there. So I guess you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt, but I do find it interesting that she's never really spoken out about it. And she dropped her lawsuit against him. It's interesting that a lawsuit's brought up when it's in relation to similar situations of what Katie is in now, like in real time. It, it's just very interesting that the timing and the coincidence of me finding this video. Which I also thought was interesting. What I thought was interesting more than anything was that John kept saying that she has narcissistic personality disorder. But I'm like, did she get that diagnosis? Like, I know you can you can sense someone's a narc. Um, but without the diagnosis, it would be hard, right? I'm in her defense, you know, anybody who's provided criticism to Katie has at some point either made the claim themselves that they believe she could be a narcissist or it's something that was brought up in comment section. Enjoy the fact that she says without the diagnosis, you know, it's just being said because that's what I say to like my subscribers during live streams when that is brought up. However, Katie has put her own opinion of other people's mental health out there. I know as we're providing commentary and our opinions about things, it is very easy to misspeak. But if you're thinking about what you're actually saying, you would catch yourself in that misspeak and correct it. I have misspoken a couple of times during my live streams and I acknowledge that I misspoke and I correct it and I apologize if it's anything that could be offensive to somebody. I feel like as a creator, that's kind of a responsibility that we have to have. For time's sake, I'm going to skip forward. Trying to balance the growth of this channel and then the amount of um, accounts that are now targeting me. And this was a year ago, and she's saying that accounts were targeting her, which I mean, we present day, we know she continues to say in present day, she has specifically called out who she believes are these accounts that are targeting her. And a lot of these individuals she has claimed to be trolls or harassing her have been able to show that that they do not fall under those definitions. So it's interesting. I'm interested to see what she has to say for the rest of this clip. I am going to say now um, balancing who I can trust and trying to figure out if I'm doing things wrong and then being under stress and then trying to like not lash out and then realizing if I do lash out, that's what I'm giving people what they want. And it's like this past week was hard. I think the worst was when I received that message on Instagram of someone calling my son the R word. Um, and that night was terrible. Um, and I just have to remember that the more I grow, the more this kind of stuff will happen. And I definitely don't mean to like lash out and I feel really bad and I know I shouldn't react all the time. And, and yeah. What happened to this level of self-awareness? She obviously had it at some point. She is here acknowledging the fact that she reacted due to what somebody sent her and she pushed it out to everybody. And she's acknowledging that that's poor behavior and in poor taste and that she doesn't need to do that. This is a year ago, guys. A year ago, she was able to self-reflect to some degree and see that this was an issue. However, a year later, she has done nothing but continually feed into this, which is, in my opinion, why I don't think she's the best person to be a creator. And I don't mean that to sound harsh. I'm not trying to say she shouldn't have her channel. But what I'm saying is if you cannot take criticism or the fact that you're going to get hate, you shouldn't create a YouTube. There, We all have the ability at some point to gain a larger following. And that is going to come with the territory. I've said that in other videos uh, when she wants to talk 
about trolls and stuff like that. It is part of being a creator on any kind of social media platform that you are going to have people who are going to judge you, who are going to criticize you, who are going to disagree with you. Not everybody's going to be okay with the content you put out. Not everybody's going to be okay with how you address things. Not everybody is going to have the same opinion you have. That's why we're people. That's why life is interesting. I mean, we hear things like this all the time. So I understand if she was a new creator doing this, but it's a year later and she has done nothing but continue to act. I don't know how she reacted in this situation, but she continues to react to what people say. I understand as a parent, and she talks about that in this next bit, how, you know, she's putting herself out there. People can say whatever they want about her, but because it had to do with her son and that the R word is super hurtful to her because of her son, that it's off limit. I agree. And I I disagree. Um, and this is probably going to be somewhat of an unpopular opinion. I don't agree with people targeting the creator's family or talking about the creator's family to any degree, especially if it's a minor. However, she has up until this point talked about her son. She has almost made him a part of her content. And in one of the other makeup videos I watch, he is in the video. I don't agree. I think it's really crappy behavior of viewers or anybody to be that disgusting, to call a child disgusting names. And you and I both know that even if her child didn't have needs, people are going to say nasty things. People who are willing to put their children online, even if they're picture perfect, there's going to be people who are going to provide nasty comments. That's just the sick reality of the internet. She could have easily not addressed it again. Like, obviously, I'm assuming there was some kind of live or something done where she talked about this. Why is she bringing it up yet again? Like, is she trying to garner sympathy? This is why people have issues with her and constantly playing the victim because you've already had the issue. You've already had the outlash or out whatever you want to say. You've already said things that you obviously are not proud that you said and how you reacted. A very intelligent, in my opinion, way to handle this is to put out a statement on all your social medias that you're sorry if it offended any of your subscribers and move on. Don't continue to bring up what pissed you off or what made you mad because we're humans. When we're frustrated or we're defensive, even if we bring it up again, we get mad again. Maybe that's just me. Let's keep going. It's definitely hard when you, I'm, a, I'm such a mama bear, you know, when you enter mama bear mode and when you hear someone calling your son that, it's just so hard. Um, yeah, Evie, we love you. Don't worry about it. Oh, and you guys, welcome Kate Cush. I've had, I've lost a couple moderators recently and um, we have added Kate as a moderator. She has actually been a follower of mine for a super long time. I'm going to skip through this. I've listened through this part. She talks about how this is this new moderator and how long she's been following her and stuff like that. If you're interested in any parts that I'm skipping forward through, go watch her video, which I if you make it this far, you will catch this joke if it's still up because I know she took down the video that Radiant Brit put up. So I wouldn't be surprised after we put out these videos if she privates or deletes all of her makeup related content. So what we have to deal with as a moderator. Oh, so in that point, what happened was the young person who had been hidden or blocked offered to be a moderator at that point. And that's Katie addressing that her moderators deal with adult things that sh as somebody underage shouldn't deal with, which I agree with. Do I think maybe she's exaggerating just slightly, but I understand she doesn't, she's trying to provide to a child why they shouldn't be moderating her channel. Um, Children shouldn't be in a moderating position at all. She could have easily said that rather than trying to come up with excuses. Well, this is called nude, but it's purple, if you can see. That's just what the palette's called. It's called nudes, but it's purple. Okay, so she allowed them to pick which palette she was going to use, and she ends up choosing to use the uh, so, Buddha nude palette. Huh. 
what I have, I don't have the new palette. I have the retrograde and which one's this? The Desert Dust. So what I am going to do is I'm going to use these two palettes, get the colors in these that are closest to the ones she is using. I also, in preparation for this part of the video, I did print off from Huda's website palette. Um, that she has all next to each other. So I can use this as a good reference to know what shade looks closest since I don't have this palette. The looks are not going to be exact. Just to get as close to what she has as possible. Ms, you're cute. All right, so I think I'm just gonna do, so I'm gonna start with Secret. And I'm just going to start blending that into my crease. Okay. One thing I forgot to say is she doesn't put down any eye base or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the eye that she, she does the same way she, she does her eyeshadow. And then I'm going to do this eye the way that I would do my eyeshadow. Um, I did not put foundation or concealer on my eye in the beginning. I do this step once I get to my eyes. So I'm going to take my Born This Way concealer and just do a little dot on there. And then I'm gonna blend that out with a sponge if I can get it. And then once this is blended out, I am going to grab some of this translucent powder with a big fluffy brush. I usually don't use more Laura Mercier. This is a, a travel size I got to try it out. I'm not a huge fan of this powder. All right, so that is set. She takes a big fluffy brush, try and grab brushes of similar shape. I know her brush is a little bit bigger than this, but I'm going to use this one. It's a Morphe brush. And the shade that is closest to that is going to be Crash from um, the Mercury Retrograde. And I just sweep it from the side to the side. And that's going to be the base of my crease. And then I'll put a darker color on top of it to deepen it. And for my base under color, I always use this. It's a Sephora. I don't even know what the number is. It's already faded off. It's a crease one. Her color is a little bit darker than mine, so I'm trying to build it up a little bit. I'm going to take a similar brush, a similar brush in the same shade and place it in my crease on my right eye as I would my eyeshadow. I definitely want to be a balance on this channel. Hey, um, Carly, we see your messages, so you can definitely... Definitely stop is what I'm sure she's insinuating at. Which again, this was something and had just unblocked who we know now was somebody under the age of 18 who is paying for membership. So again, I mean, this is a common criticism people have of her is that she is rude to her paying members. We are seeing that happen a year ago with a minor. So I'm just going in on this one. I'm trying to see what this brush is. It's a something crease. Okay. So that's like the base of my crease. And then. Which to be fair to her, I do my eyeshadow similar to her. I do my crease, my base crease shade first. This is probably not a shade I would typically go in with right away. The main difference I have noticed between the way she does her eyeshadow and how I lay my eyeshadow down is she just is in the crease for right now. I tend to focus on the outer portion of my eye as well. A lot of hers is just crease work, which again, this is all based off of preference and what you want your final look to be. My favorite, favorite colors in this palette for my crease um, are typically, I really love this tease color or I love Love Bite. It is so, so beautiful. Um, 
I think for today, I'm going to go a little bit more muted with the T's to deepen my crease. And when I deepen my crease, I use a different brush. I use a smudge brush. So I'm going to smudge this into my crease and then I'm going to smudge it on my the base of my lashes. It's super tiny. I like never use these. That is a personal preference thing. The shade that is closest to that out of these two palettes, Karma, in the retrograde palette. Again, these are probably going to be pretty different from what she gets. This is um, Nudes by Huda Beauty. I love brighter colors too, Amy. So then I just smudge it in. Like this. To deepen that color on both sides. So that looks like a pretty much a darker purple. So I'm actually going to go into hot mess. And this is like a smudge brush right here. Well, this is weird. I'm going to have to do this. Oh, Laura's back. We've missed you, Laura. Hi, honey. Okay, and then I'm going to take up this brush and then just kind of make that color even deeper. Looks like she takes just a blending brush. I've already done this eye different than her just based off. What I like about the Huda ones is there's not a ton of fallout um, when you use the palette. Um, some of the Too Faced um, colors definitely have a lot of fallout. Um, but I will say Huda and Too Faced are my favorite right now for... Um, I actually don't get subscription boxes. I but um, I just go to Sephora sometimes, and I just ask the people there to make a recommendation. That's actually how I've ended up with some of my palettes is they've just offered, and then um, other people I talk to have said stuff. They have this. The makeup I'm wearing today is all at Sephora. I don't know if they sell it at Ulta. Okay, so you can see her eye look now. You can see her eye look compared to my eye look. Like I already accidentally by habit started to blend right here. So we're just gonna cover that part. I also by habit drugged it out and blended it out more than she does, which is fine. Just be aware that I'm making those slight differences on accident. For her, it looks like she places with the smudge brush pretty much over the color she initially lays down. Um, for my side, I always place my darker shade underneath, like slightly down, and then I'm gonna try to blend it all together. And I am still using a blending brush. For this morning, how cute was that? And then, so now I'm going to do the tease and put it underneath my lash line and kind of smudge it onto my upper lash line in the corner. And that's kind of how you can get a smoky look is if you go underneath your at lash line. And then I just kind of smudge it in right in that corner. It looks super crazy before I finish. So I look kind of like I have raccoon eyes. And then to soften the purpleness, I'm just going to use that same base that I put on the secret and I'm going to put it right on top and kind of smudge it in. So it's not as harsh of a purple. I don't know which brush she's using. So I'm going to go back in with the original brush and go back into that original, that first shade. That's what she's trying to say. She goes back in with that first shade and goes over top just to lighten the color. If you're trying to do makeup, I will be honest with you. This will work. However, if you just take more time than what she has and like blending out the shade in its entirety, you won't have to go back and do this step. And then... I'm going to take my blending brush and just blend this all in. 
And I do like how the hoodas blend. I agree with her there. They do, her shadows do blend really well. What I really, really, really love about this palette, which is my favorite, is that they have these metallics that are so fun. Now, I, they have these glitters. This pressed glitter is crazy. I don't like it. And I don't like the glitters in here at all. I don't use them. They kind of remind me of going to prom. Um, but the, these metallics are beautiful. I'm going to do two colors for the metallic. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to do this darker one on the outside of my crease. And then I'm going to put this on the inside of the inside of the lid. So I'm going to do this on the first half of the lid. And then this is going to go on the outer half of the lid. There's a method to my madness, I swear. Okay, so she is using like the marbled eyeshadows and in the retro, the retrograde palette, and I'm going to use gold glitch galaxy. So these are going to be different. They are not um, same tones as what she's having, but I'm going to put the darker one on the outer part of my lid and the lighter one on the inner part like she is going to do. And then I'm going to do this eye the way I would probably just one shade. I don't typically go in with two glitters. Here she is cleaning her brushes, which right. whatever you can hear her wiping it. So I just start in the middle and I just sort of sweep it out like this. And it's a like it's a pressed metallic, so it's like I love these ones so much. They have so much depth. I will also say why she, while she does this, um, there is fallout if you use these shades with, uh, as you can see on her face, if you use it with a brush. I don't know if she talks about it here, if it's in a different video. She that, doesn't right? use her fingers for glitter, which is fine. There's a lot of people. You just got, oh, Lauren, you're so cute. And then I'm going to use, so that color is called Charmed. And then on the inner part of the eye, I'm going to use this color called Crave. And that's just going to go like this. So if you can see, it kind of creates like a, it, it brightens the, um, the front of the eye if you do it like that, I guess. I don't know. It highlights the front of the eye. I am just going to use my finger and use um, Galaxy. And I always do like a lighter on the inside and a darker on the outside. That's just my preference. Everyone has their own preferences. And then I'm going to try to blend those in a little bit. And then to just highlight and sort of make the inner part of my eye lighter, I'm going to take like a defining brush like this. And then there's this bare color that I just put on the inside. So she takes a lighter shade and puts on the inner part of her eye. So I will do that on this eye as she is doing it. And then I take that same bear and I brush it on my brow line like this. So I will do the same on this side. And she used a... When she did that, she uses a, I think the shade was Bone, and that is literally a matte shade. I don't use a matte shade when I highlight my inner corner. I use a shimmer shade. This palette doesn't have any that I will use, that I would use, so I will skip that step for today. So this is where I'm at right now. It still looks kind of crazy. Bear with me until I'm done. Looks like she's just going back in and blending. Glitter all over my face. I will zoom in. Yeah, Jesse um, Bear has been. Yeah, Jay, you've been around since like when I only had like three thousand subscribers. Um, she talks about Jesse Bear being a cosmetologist. 
So if you recall, and I would, wouldn't be surprised if Britt makes a similar comment to this. If you wouldn't recall, whenever, because she does this in every single makeup video she does, she licks a Q-tip before she puts it near her eye. She makes a big deal about something that Jill does in talks about her getting eye infections. She is more likely to get an eye infection from licking her Q-tip and then putting it close to her eye. She really has no place for, like she shouldn't be making comments like that anyways. They're mean girl comments. As you state in this video, you're not a beauty guru. You're not a beauty influencer. So why do you feel confident in tearing apart another woman's makeup routine? Q-tips are my favorite. Yeah, there goes Ryan's toy reviews. Is that not the same person who is representing, isn't his attorney the same one who's representing Tati? Did Emily D. Baker say that? Am I correct in that? I noticed she has a video around the same time talking about something to do with that channel. I'm not sure if it's that specific one that Emily said Daltsy represented, but I think it was, and I find that interesting. I'm not sure. I don't know if she says it and I'm not going to continue to wait um, because I'm impatient. It sounds like she's using, she's using a liquid liner and one of her other videos, she uses the Benefit Roller Lash Eyeliner. For her eyeliner, she starts on the inside and works her way out. So I'm going to do that on this eye uh, and I will also attempt to do a wing. If you've watched my videos or if you don't, I can't do wings for crap with uh, eyeliners like this, but I am proving a point. So I'm going to do what she does to the best of my abilities. If this turns to shit, I'm sorry. And when I do, I don't start from the inside of my eye. So this is gonna be confusing. This is the Fenty Beauty wing liner felt tip, but it's fine. You guys aren't gonna be able to see what I'm doing. I have to look over here. This goes to show, I'm not trying to be dramatic, but this goes to show how different makeup is and how different applying techniques is different. This is so uncomfortable for me to apply my eyeliner from the inside out. I've never done my eyeliner like this and it, I'm not trying to be dramatic, but it's like seriously difficult for me to do right now. Sorry for the silence. My wings are always the hardest part. <laughs> I agree with her on that. Let's fight with the wings on these days. Looks like she is curling her lashes, so we will do that. She uses NARS Climax. I don't have that mascara. I'm using Urban Decay Perversion in the sample size. A lot of the FTC stuff is because the larger channels are not properly like um, disclosing to people that they are basically uploading advertisements. So if you think about it this way, think of it, for instance, like the Shane, and I know you guys are going to get mad at me, but think of this, for instance, with the Shane Dawson and Jeffrey series, the entire series was basically a commercial for him to launch his palette, but he documented it and packaged it in a way where it appeared like you were just watching a show about a process but ultimately the goal is to for him to sell the palette right but he's not disclosing that it's a commercial and that's the problem what that's happening a lot on youtube right now is that people aren't telling you that you're watching commercials they're not properly disclosed I think that was a terrible analogy, in my opinion. I have not watched this last part because eyeliner and mascara are pretty straightforward. I mean, you can apply them differently and use different 
techniques to get them to the length that you want. I'm not going to, there's really nothing you can do wrong. But that, to me, that's not a, a very good way to describe what was going on with the FTC issues about a year ago, because that was Shane and Jeffrey's product. So yes, it was kind of like a huge commercial for it, but it's their product. They weren't being paid to initially to talk about that. Of course, it brings in traction. I get where her argument is, but the issue a year ago was creators having sponsored content and not disclosing the sponsored content, uh, which is still an ongoing issue. And I saw uh, recently somebody had actually given Katie criticism because she posted on her Instagram story some different, she posted like saying, oh, I got these clothes from 3130. And then in another post directly after that said, oh, thank you for partnering or working with me or something like that. So like your first one, was that not, you know, like she, there was some, this, I can't remember what creator it was, but was kind of providing her criticism that she was running a very risky game and that she wasn't fully stating in the first clip that it was sponsored until the very end of it. Closing that the products that they're using, they have relationships with and they're getting sponsorship money from. Um, they're just not being truthful. So it's deceptive. All in all, it seems to be that we're, I'm not going to watch the last half. She didn't put anything on her lips, which is fine. I don't always wear product on my lips. I did put chapstick on during the video, which when I do wear lip gloss on the channel and what I have seen her use is the Fenty Beauty gloss bombs. I don't know what, what shade she was using before. This is in Fussy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom you guys in and show you the difference. So we are first going to look at the eyeshadow so you guys I mentioned it when I did it this is the eye I did like hers she draws her I didn't fill it in all the way obviously so that's my bad she draws her wings out further than I do I put more shade color here than what she typically does, but that's okay. It's very much centered in the crease. Although she uses two different colors on her eyelid, I really can't hardly tell a difference. There is a ton of fallout because of the brush. Um, you can see on my actual face how like textured my face is. My nose is always textured. I don't think I ever zoom you guys in this close, but like there's really no there's a harsh line here from the contour because it's a little bit too dark and i put it where she did and she also brushes it up along here which i tried to do as well and on my nose to me it just looks like my nose is dirty um but that's just me this eyebrow is so intense for me don't ever fill in my eyebrows like this um, I also don't pluck my eyebrows, so ignore that. On this side, I, um, again, failed at filling in my wing. Again, poor me. I don't typically use a liquid eyeliner if I'm going to do a wing. This eyebrow is a lot lighter, a lot more natural. If I ever do my eyebrows, this is how I do them. My contour is almost non-detectable. Like this literally is my natural shadow. I have been placing my contour higher than that to um, elongate my face a little bit more because a girl's chunky. <laughs> uh, I also have some blush on for my eyeshadow. This is backwards, so I'm struggling if you can't tell. For my eyeshadow, I blend a lot more than what it appears Katie does. You can see in this lighting the difference because she just coats over the darker color, which was a purple. This crease looks very purple, whereas this crease looks very uh, like pinkish, mauvish. Uh, it's more blended. I only use the one shade on the eyelid and I only take it in about halfway and there's like zero to no fallout here because I didn't use a brush. I used my finger, but again, that is whatever method you're comfortable with is what you should use. This side of my face still has some radiance to it. It's not as cakey under my eyes because I didn't put concealer there. This eye under here is like super cakey in my opinion. You can see like every crinkle I have under that eye, whereas this one you really can't. It's more, my skin is coming through on this side. That could be 
due to the fact I don't use as much powder. It could be because I used the products beforehand. I mean, it could be a number of things. You know, Katie maybe does do moisturizer before she does makeup, but she didn't tell us that step, so I didn't include it. Overall, there's there is some big differences. To me, this side of my face looks nicer than this side. So we will, there's this side, which is the side that I did. And then there is this side. So to me, like this contour does not make my face look any thinner. It provides a shadow. It does cast a shadow there, but it's not providing the effect that it should. And that's just based off of placement and face shape. So I'm not going to say that that's Katie's fault. I just followed how she does her makeup. My nose does appear dirty to me. I never do contour on my nose. So that could be at fault of me. This eyebrow to me is like out of this world. It is very sharp. It probably is translating on camera really nicely but in real life, it does not translate for me. It looks very almost Instagram brow-esque. Overall, I don't think that the way she does her makeup or her eyeshadow is flattering on me, so to speak, like her placement isn't the best. That's just my opinion. And that's kind of the point of this video was to educate people. You can use the same products or very similar products in very different ways as long as it's what you are comfortable with and the outcome you want, that's all that matters. You should not be, in my opinion, you should not be judging other women or men on how they do their makeup because it's not how you do your makeup, which is very much how that video came across. With all of that being said, I do want to thank you guys. I know this has been extremely long. Um, I don't blame you if you didn't make it this far. I hope everybody did. If you're interested in watching this video, I will link it below as well as linking Brit's videos, both the one that inspired me to ask her to do this collab with me and the collab video she does in, re in correspondence with mine. Um, if you've made it this far, please let me know because I know this is a doozy, but I appreciate all of you guys and all of your time and effort that you have put into me and my content and my channel. You guys are amazing. I am going to go wash all of this off and get ready for my live stream tonight because it is Wednesday. Bye guys.